Madame Tussard has an even darker history than people ever suspected. Some find the experience creepy, while others find it entertaining. But one thing's for sure, a stroll through Madame Tussard's wax museum is an adventure like no other. Life-size statues of wax celebrities greeting you in every room make for a memory you'll never forget. Thousands of visitors shuffle through the waxy halls of Tussard's museums throughout the world every year. But most people enjoying the faux replicas of their favorite celebs have no idea about the history of the woman who brought the art to the public. And her tale is darker than her cheery statuses would have you believe. You'd be hard-pressed to find an actual room with Beyonce fist-pumping between members of the royal family, but at Madame Tussard's museums, it's all possible with wax. However, most visitors have no idea the history behind the woman who started it all. Madame Tussard, whose real name is Marie Groscholtz, was born in France in 1761. You might wonder how someone got involved with the wax figure industry, but one glance into Marie's lineage gives the answer. Marie's mother was a widow, and Marie never knew her father. However, that didn't mean she lacked a father figure while growing up. There was one man she learned plenty from. An anatomist named Philippe Curtis grew close with Marie's mother and took the young girl under his wing. He had a special skill, wax sculpting. That came in handy for building models of the human body. It also intersected with Marie's family in an unusual way. If you look at the relatives of Marie's bloodline, she actually came from a long line of executioners. That's right, her family had a morbid past that definitely resulted in her fascination with cadavers. But how'd the wax fit in? The bloody French Revolution actually created a massive demand for wax sculptures. The mannequins acted as a kind of real-time political commentary, and it was always Marie's job to make the death masks of the recently deceased. As lifelike and amazing as many of Marie's masks were, her work required her to find a comfort in rather grotesque environments. She was surrounded by death frequently, but she welcomed the workload. This was the impression made of Marie Antoinette, France's last queen before the revolution's end, almost immediately after she was guillotined on October 16, 1793. As Marie learned during her career, she needed to be ready at a moment's notice. She kept her ear to the ground when it came to the deaths of prominent figures. When Charlotte Corday assassinated Jean-Paul Marat, Marie arrived to the scene so fast police hadn't finished processing the killer yet. As popular as Marie's sculpting was, her personal life was far less satisfying. Her lazy husband didn't contribute anything, so at age 40, Marie packed her bags and ran off to England to achieve a well-filled purse. After arriving at the new country, she partnered with a man named Paul Philipstall, who was a colleague of her mentor, Philippe Curtis. The pair established a traveling cultural show, and Marie eventually set up a permanent shop on London's Baker Street. She called her shop Toussard's Baker Street Gallery. It was a 5,000-square-foot salon filled with comfortable seating and ornate decor, so visitors could admire her variety of sculptures in an engaging environment. The salon held a variety of famous figures, especially models of infamous criminals. Two hugely popular mannequins were William Burke and William Hare, two known body snatchers. Then, after the success of the salon, came Marie's Chamber of Horrors. The Chamber of Horrors was described as the snobbish glamour of royalty, as well as the thrill of being au fait with the latest gruesome murder of assassination. And it was exactly that. Visitors with strong stomachs were treated to various recreations of famous murder scenes, and the show overall paid tribute to the French Revolution. Madame Marie was soon compared to another household name in live entertainment. Marie was a hustler, just like P.T. Barnum in America with his circus and ornate live performances. Both helped create what we currently recognize as the concept of celebrity, and to this day her museums are keeping up with the times. The satirical magazine Punch praised her contribution, saying, In these days, no one can be considered properly popular unless he's admitted into the company of Madame Tussard celebrities in Baker Street. Madame Tussard died in 1840, and at the time of her death, the wax museum she created was England's most popular tourist attraction. But just because she made mannequins cool, it doesn't mean people everywhere find them charming. <laughs>